Hey everybody! This week's project is going to be a little different. You may remember that I had a couple of non-turning commissions that I was working on before the holidays, and this is one of them. Uh, this is going to be a custom walnut and resin mantle. Here I am planing the first piece of walnut. This is going to be the front of the mantle, which is going to have the resin inlay in it. So running it through the planer, I'm making both sides parallel to each other. And then I'll take it to the jointer and make the edge plumb to the top and the bottom. This long a board on my jointer is a little tricky. So basically I just chalked out a rough abstract river pattern. I kind of went around the knots and some of the natural defects in the wood. So I just took a router with a straight bit and got rid of all of the material. I didn't go particularly deep because I didn't really need to. Probably only maybe, well, maybe not quite a quarter. Put some shellac on it so that the resin won't stain it. And then I made a dam out of just regular silicone caulk. You can see my supervisor there on the bed. He's giving me the stink eye. So this mica powder is fire engine red. It came out a lot more orange when I mixed up the big batch for the pour versus what I made for the sample. It ended up being okay, but it was definitely not as red as I was expecting it to be. And then within this solid color resin, I poured some interference red and that is that cream colored but you can see that when the light hits it you get a little bit of a flash of red it's kind of a it's not only color shifting but it's something like that and you saw me hit it with the infrared thermometer and I was waiting till the temperature of the resin started to get up over 120 ish um, because that means that the exothermic reaction is starting to take place and you have a better shot at being able to swirl the two colors of resin together and not have them just turn into, you know, a muddy mess and make it orange. And I went through with a bamboo skewer and I'm just kind of swirling it together. I think it looks like lava. So I ran that barbecue skewer along the edges to help release any bubbles and then I hit it with the torch to to pop any that came to the surface. And I took it back to the shop and removed the silicone with a card scraper. And then I sanded. I started at 80 and I probably went up to 320 from here. So now I'm starting to work on the pieces that are going to make up the top and the bottom of the mantle. Um, I started with rough sawn walnut, ran it through the planer like I did for the top piece, and then I'm jointing the edges here right now. So once I get one good edge on each of the pieces, I will take it to the table saw, put the good edge up against the fence, and then rip just a small amount off of the opposite edge so that I have two parallel sides. And it doesn't really matter what the width of this is right now, I just need to get them uh, parallel. Unfortunately, I didn't have enough wood that had the same coloration in it in the right width, so one of the pieces is going to have to get um, joined. So I will edge glue some boards 
together to make the top. And then I'm going to take the secondary piece and make it plumb. I haven't used a biscuit joiner in 11 billion years, but I decided that since I was going to edge glue kind of a long piece, I would go ahead and add a little bit of extra strength in there. It also helps to align it. And I was able to get a really good color match on this um, glue up here. I always dry fit everything. Now we can have some glue. I'm just using Tight Bond 2 uh, wood glue here. Um, and that's a glue bot. If you guys don't have one of those and you do any sort of flat work, they're amazing. It makes it so you don't have to tip the bottle upside down. I've seen some of the, some of the other turners put like their shine juice and stuff in it. Lots of clamps. So I am starting to work on the joinery system here. Um, I am right now just cutting a kerf in on either side. By flipping it end for end and using the same fence, I make sure that they're exactly the same distance from the edges. and I had made a setup block earlier. I don't remember why I didn't just use a daddle blade to start with here, um, but for some reason I didn't. So here I'm going to put the daddle blade in and take out the material that's between those two grooves that I cut that are just the width of the saw curve. Make sure I set the height right. Use the setup block again to set the fence. Plug the saw back in because I always unplug it when I change the blade. I had to clamp my feather board to the table because it was past the miter slot. And you can see that I have a feather board clamped to the fence to help keep the board flat as I'm running it through. So the joinery system that I'm going to use is basically a rabbit inside a groove. Um, and there's going to be a picture here in a second that will show you what I've got going on. So the front of the mantle is the part that has the resin in it, and then I'm making these grooves at the top and the bottom. The only bad thing about the daddle blade is that they never really leave a completely flat bottom. So I put a straight bit in the router and just went over it to make sure I had a nice flat bottom. And here's the terrifying part. I'm cutting the waterfall edges. Basically, the mantle is going to wrap around both sides. So I made the first miter cut, and I'm hoping to just take enough material off to make the miter go in the opposite direction. And then that way, the waterfall edge is going to be just about perfect. <laughs> I 
I've got to check it again. I don't want to screw this up. So both of those pieces are different lengths right now, and that doesn't matter because I'm going to trim them to length in a minute. Um, what I was doing right there is just to get the miters cut and make sure that the wraparound for the waterfall is going to work right. The total depth of the mantle from the front to the wall is going to be 8 inches. So then I set up a setup block before I made this cut so that when I put the second piece on there, I'm going to reference it off of the angled miter joint and then they'll both be exactly the same length. So I have a sacrificial fence that goes on when I'm using the daddle blade if the daddle blade is going to get um, buried if you need to make a rabbit or some other such thing. Um, there is a, a space in that piece of melamine that allows the blade to hit that and not your fence. So here I'm cutting the rabbit and it's only going to be cut on the front edge of the top and the bottom. The back end is going to be flush against the wall so it'll just be a flush cut. And now I have to trim the top and the bottom to length now that I have the rabbit cut on them. So I went ahead and, and dry assembled the, the front and the sides so that I could measure exactly. I still have to cut a rabbit on the ends of these pieces to slide into the groove that's on the sides of the mantle. And that's what I'm going to do right now. I put them both together with the rabbits facing each other and then I marked where the rabbit needs to get cut on both of them at the same time so that I can make sure that they're the same size. And I'm just using that carpenter square as a straight edge. I had to use the router to cut these rabbits because there was no way I was going to be able to get the, that long a piece to go through on the table saw. I liked the fit, so I flip it around and do the same thing on the other end, and then I don't I can't tell if this is the top or the bottom piece, but both the top and the bottom are basically identical. This was the piece that I glued up, and so now I am trimming it to its final length. I'm sorry, to its final width. And then this is going to get the same treatment so that they're exactly the same width. I glued the sides one at a time. This piece of wood that I used for the front of the mantle had just a little bit of a cup to it, and I didn't think that it was going to be an issue, but it fought me every step of the way. So I used these plastic clamping squares and clamped it to the cast iron top of my table saw, and that way I made sure that it was going to be um, plumb and level. And here I'm dry fitting either the top or the bottom one. Now the top and the bottom have been assembled and I added a couple of walnut support pieces between the, uh, the top and the bottom at both ends and I drilled some quarter inch holes and am putting in some walnut dowels as pins just to help hold that um, walnut support piece between the, the top and the bottom. It will just make sure that it doesn't want to warp or come apart or anything. Overbuilding is my middle name. And 
and I'm going to flush cut those dowels off and start sanding. The client wanted a gloss finish. Um, the first finish that I was using on it did not come out well at all, so uh, I decided to just go ahead and do a resin top coat, which would be glossy. Um, what we're doing here is just painting on a coat over all of the vertical sides, and in doing that, it's supposed to help the resin keep from running off in individual drips. Um, I can't remember if it's surface tension or capillary action, but one of the two, if there's already resin on the vertical surface, will help it to flow down the surface evenly, and it will it'll self-level that way. So I've got a heat gun that I'm going over with. We're looking for bubbles. We're looking for anything that might need a little bit of help to, to flow. I tented it for the night and came back the next morning to see how we did. And it looks great. So I made a little jig for my trim router to cut the resin drips off of the bottom edge of the mantle. And then I sanded it smooth, vacuumed all the dust up, and it was ready to install. And install I did, but we all decided that we didn't like the resin top coat. So back to the shop. I made a carriage sled for my plunge router and took the bulk of the resin off with that. Um, and then I went at it with 60 grit sandpaper for what felt like a couple of days to get the resin out of the wood pores and uh, make it so that the matte finish that I was going to apply would soak in right. It was such a mess, that stuff sticks to everything. But in the end, it was worth it. This is the tried and true original wood finish. Um, you put it on a really thin coat, let it sit for an hour, come back and buff it off, and then you come back in 24 hours and um, burnish it with a four out steel wool, and it looks fantastic. It really brings out the uh, colors in the resin. I really like it. So I have three coats of the original wood finish, and then I just gave it a quick buff with, uh, that's just a dry fleece bonnet, um, and that just gave it a little extra sheen. I didn't have very good light to take pictures, so these really don't show it off, but it's much better and we're all happier. So, win.